Welcome back to the Basic Bikers YouTube channel. It's Mark the Ayrshire Vlogster here. How you are doing? How you all doing? Hope you are doing well. So if you're new to the channel, check out the other videos. If you like what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm uploading. To my current subscribers, thanks for your continued support. So tonight, I'm going to do my six month review and what we're going to do is, we're going to pop straight into how it handles. So I'm going to take a wee stretch of road that I normally would do this on. Some nice twists and turns, or depending on how much traffic's on it to be honest. Oh well this is turning into quite a thing. I've had the bike about six months but I thought I would give you a six month review of it nice tight bit to start with So I have managed to get out in it a few times, done a couple of meetups and that, so I thought I may as well shoot this video. So the first thing we're going to go talk about is the handling of the bike. So if you are already aware, or you should be already be aware, it's a 2010 FZ1N Yamaha. 998cc or 996 good solid bike so we'll just get by this first wee bit and we'll see how she handles this will just get me warmed up and the bike warmed up As usual, it's very windy tonight. As I say in all my videos, it's always windy here. Oh, they've relayed some here. That's always good, but what it does give problems with shit on the road, stones and gravel. So handling. To be fair, I've had no complaints for the short time I've had it. Suspension sucks up. All the bumps. You get some real confidence in the corners from it. So when I first got it, I thought the suspension was quite hard, firm. For the way I ride, it's probably suitable for me. So as the months have went by, I've got used to it. Does everything it should do, hasn't it? Hasn't it surprised me? 
as they call me here, it's a comfortable ride. It's been pretty good to be fair. In terms of power, let's get bags of power. See dips and bits like that. You can catch you if something's been relayed. The tarmac. for overtaking and chewing through the traffic it's absolutely fantastic power wise and it pulls in any gear that will happily go about the tune at 30 mile an hour and 6 gear it's pop out by him for the corner that was a big stone or whatever hit me <laughs> that's what handling wise absolutely love it power wise bags of power You can fair flick it a bit, it's not an issue. Very flickable. Recording, yep, stunning view. That's called Burnley. And then you get Bees, Johnston. Getting straight distracted there. Right, so the bikes bags are fun. What can I say? be a lot of fun on a track as well, something I've not done but looking forward to doing in the future. I mean you can just pin it. And the front brake is absolutely awesome. So this isn't covered already, I'm just going to turn it around shoot back the other way. Aye, so at first suspension seemed quite hard, but as I've got used to it, riding it, the setup seems to suit me, suits the way I ride, and I'm absolutely over the moon with it. Brakes are fantastic, front brakes fantastic, or should I say the front brakes, fantastic, whoa, whoa, and the rear brake is what you would expect for a rear brake, pretty much non-existent. But the front brakes are really sharp, this is getting new discs and pads on it mind you, which obviously helps it. Power wise when I do the walk around I'll put the stats up, it's a 136 brake. I'll put that up in the specs. So you got a lot of bite for your money. Essentially it's the old R1 engine before they made the cross plane that's in it. It's just fueled differently. <coughs> so you'll get real low down power. But what you do get on a standard one, you get a kind of the throw. You got a terrible throw shot off. 
when you close the throttle and then open it up again, it, it's a delay. And in first, second, and third gear, are kind of held back by the manufacturer. If you know what I mean? It's kind of sluggish and slow. So, tuning the bike is definitely something you should look at. Which brings me to this. So, when I purchased this bike, obviously got it delivered a couple of weeks before lockdown so we locked down gave me a chance to kind of go over the bike and all the rest of it and surprise surprise it came fitted with a power commander power commander 5 so the first couple of runs it doesn't have any of the issues Obviously the person before me has rectified that with a power commander. It's got a speedo heel on it as well. Which would tell me they've played about with the sprockets. So I don't suffer with these common issues that it's got. Which I'm over the moon with. So it saved me having to fix it. Sorry about this wind noise. Comfort wise it's bang on, you're kinda of sitting upright. Very upright. Pegs are no too high, they're okay. Mirrors are fine. Still got a bit of your elbows in them, but we're oh, fine. The wind's not helping in any. So the bike is a lot of fun. And as I said, you got a lot of bike for your money. If you kind of like the kind of styling and look here, an MT10 and the power it gives you, then this is a bike for you without paying the MT10 prices. The only problem is they're quite hard to find. <coughs> I had to get down south for me. But if you're ready for a thousand cc and you want a naked, and it's a used bike you're after, I'd pick this all day long against the competition. For each year, so it's a 2010. Obviously, there's some nice bikes out that are a couple of years old now. Starting to come into the affordable bracket. But if it's your first kind of big 1000cc bike, this will do the job for you. I mean the gravel everywhere. Don't know why they never ever clean that up. Put the cat's eyes back in the road. But they never clean up. Never sweep it down.
you can see they're overtaking, absolute breeze. Another thing about this bike, it would be absolutely awesome with a quick shifter on it, which I haven't done yet, but it's definitely on the cards. If you're ever coming down this road, this one here is a bit of a bitch, it tightens midway. So don't fix it on the wall, or that's where you end up in there. <laughs> you think it's opening up and then it tightens back in again. That has caught a few people out, including myself. So I'll make my way into Largs, get a wee coffee I think. Right, so I love the styling of the bike, because I love the MT-10 to be fair. It's very comfortable. I'm getting about 100 miles to the tank at the moment, 17 litre tank, which is horrendous. <laughs> but I think that's down to the mapping and other things as well, maybe the way I ride it. Clocks and everything are clear as day, switch gears all good, nice easy straightforward way you expect to find it, so no issues with that. But you can go fast in this bike, you can go slow, it's up to you. Either way, it's still good. You're still on two wheels. So, right, I'll go and get my coffee. I'll be back. Right, so what we covered off so far. Suspension, it's fine. This one felt very hard at the beginning, but I'll get used to it. Seems today what I want it today. Front brake is excellent. Back brakes, me is a back brake. It's comfortable to ride in the seats, comfy. You're sitting quite upright, bolt upright, there near. Pegs are nice and nice height, foot pegs. 17 litre tank. I don't know what mileage you're supposed to get, but I got 100 miles for that. Starts flashing about 80 miles. The mirrors are fine. You still see your elbows a wee bit, shoulder, depending on the position. Readout is absolutely crystal clear, as you could probably tell in previous videos. Switch gears all good. It's where it should be, it's no flimsy in any way. Power wise, I'll put it up on the screen, I'm just going to go to the Vlogsters car park, get a wee walk run. Tell you it's fitted to it as well, I'll show you what's fitted to it. But there's bags of power, as you would expect. And it's low down as well, torques. Good. Low down. Pull away in any gear, or take in any gear if you wanted. I'm going to get in front of this truck, man. Stay my nothing. That van is stinking. Alright, so, I love taking any gear. It's quite happy to go about the tune in sixth gear. Showed you a wee bit of the handling. It's absolutely bang on. Be a good bike for the track. If 
you were interested in doing track days, then this bike would be very adequate at it, I think. I've run through some of the known issues, the rotor needs replaced. I'm not sure what year onwards, but they need replaced. They can potentially come apart and get the engine, and that's your engine gone, or very expensive to fix. Frame cracking, I think, is in the earlier models. This is all the stuff you should look into before buying a bike anyway. Got an SC Projects can on it, it's way too loud. That was given to me by Chris Thrall Daft. Thanks for that mate. You'll hear me well before you see me. Good thing is it pops and bangs, which everybody that rides a motorcycle likes. Try to think anything else. Front lights, brilliant. You can see where you're doing, see where you're going. At night. Flickability is just... It's quite a heavy bike when you're moving it about in the garage and that, for example, but when you're on it, it's, it's, it's very flickable. Very flickable. It's got good weight, good distribution of the weight as well. The wheelbase is longer than the MT-10, which you kind of you kind of notice if you've ever taken an MT-10 out, which I have. It's uh, it, it is different having that longer wheelbase. But I'm quite happy with it. So, in fact, I'm more than happy with it. I absolutely love this bike. I can only see me going up to an MT-10 for here. Maybe an MT-09. If I was looking for something newer. But I totally love the bike. It's been the best choice I made coming off a sports bike. As you know, I started with a GSX R750 S rad, and then I dropped down to the 600 just to learn a wee bit more. Especially corners and exit speeds and stuff like that. Didn't really go on with the 600 because you had to thrash it non stop to get anything for it. But it was still a really good bike. That was the ZX6R, really fantastic bike to be honest. Never missed a heart beat near it did. Never did the SRAD either to be fair. So this is going to need new tyres. Came me a new tyre. I'm now up to 900 miles, but the back tyre's short. I've just ripped it to to bits with acceleration. And I've done some long runs, so it's a wee, wee tad squared off. I kind of feels kind of that way. So we'll get the walk around done. Once I just need to turn around in this roundabout too busy talking to you, I forgot what I was doing. So I'll get turned round. And I'll give you a walk around in the car park and I'll put the specs up on that as well. As for any downsides for the bike, I've not really had it long enough, I think, to get through what kind of bugs me. I'm going to give that another six months when I do the year's review. I'll tell you about that. when we get there, but for just now I'll just give you a good description of the bike how it makes me feel so this is my usual wee spot for doing the walk arounds
Right, so I'll do the usual. Sitting there, so I'll get the phone out. And let's record that. So it's a 2010 Yamaha FZ1N. It's a 998cc. So now you look at the specs there. It's 146 horsepower with 106 newton meters of torque. As you can see, it quite closely resembles an MT10. You can see where it went from this to an MT10. So it's the old R1 engine, just retuned, refueled before it went cross plane. It's nice and black, gold wheels. They were originally yellow, I got them changed, it's quite leery. Nice looking bike for the year. It's a wee bit dirty at the moment as you can see. I've been busy with it today. So new discs on it, new pads, front brakes are phenomenal. So the RNG that's on it, crash protection, I fitted that myself, it's RNG indicators, RNG tail tidy that's on it. It's got a heel tech hugger, which is knackered, split up the top, must be stuff getting flung up in it. We RNG bobbins as well are fitted. And it's an RNG tail tidy. So it's actually an 18 litre tank. So I'm getting 100 miles to that. Sounds pretty terrible, but I have a lot of fun doing it. SC Projects can, given to me by Chris, as I've already said, throttle daft. Thanks again for that, mate. It's got a Power Commander 5 fitted, a Speedo Healer also, a CT grips on it, I don't know what make they are, but they work fine. I fit it a quad lock next to the heated grips for my phone. A couple of mounts for the GoPro. So there it is. Totally love the bike. Completely happy with it. What would I change on it? I'd probably maybe settle the map down. As I say, it's, 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 it's mental. The bike's nuts in its current format with the map that's on it. It is absolutely crazy how it delivers the power just straight away. You can slip the back wheel very easily on it in first, second, third. It's just nuts at the moment. I'd love to get it on a dyno, see where it actually got, because you'd expect it to have lost horsepower in the 10 years. Be interesting to see what that map's doing. But that's plans for the future. I'm going to get the map looked at. I might settle it down a wee bit, just to get better feel at it. But to be honest, I'm enjoying... I'm enjoying the way I ride it at the moment anyway, so the fuel's the fuel, I'm not really concerned. So that's us, I'll get back on the bike. Right, so that's it, there she is. Great views. As usual. A lucky run about is how good the, some of the roads are and how good the views are. It's just fantastic. So that's me, I'm going to end the video there. So if you're new to the channel, Check out the other videos. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you know when we're uploading. 
and don't forget to hit the bell to our current subscribers thanks for your continued support and I'll catch you the next time so that's the video finished so there's only one thing to do get out there and ride catch you soon cheers